Welcome to Senior High School Math Series. Let us discuss solving situational problems involving inverse trigonometric functions and trigonometric equations under pre-calculus quarter two week nine based on curriculum implementation and learning management matrix for K-12's most essential learning competencies. Here is our learning competency. The learner solves situational problems involving inverse trigonometric functions and trigonometric equations. The twin goals of mathematics in the basic mathematics education in the Philippine educational system are critical thinking and problem solving. Scriven and Paul defined critical thinking as the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. On the other hand, Polya defined mathematical problem solving as finding a way around a difficulty around an obstacle and finding a solution to a problem that is unknown. In this module, we will attempt to develop skills and processes such as computing and solving, visualizing and modeling, representing and applying by solving situational problems or real-life problems involving trigonometric equations and inverse trigonometric functions. Polya's four-step process in problem solving is used all over to aid students in problem solving. And these are, number one, understand the problem. One must read the problem carefully and understand what needs to be solved. A common mistake among students is that they jump to a conclusion and try to solve problems without having read the whole problem. Once a problem is read, you will be able to list all the data involved in the problem and assign variable. Next is to devise a plan. Once you understood the problem and gathered all the information involved, you will come up with a way to solve the problem. Drawing a diagram and setting up an equation are ways that you can go about in solving your problem. There are times that the problem would require a known formula in solving for the unknown. Next is to carry out the plan. This is where you solve the equation you came up with in devising your plan. And lastly, look back. In problem solving, it is good to look back and check whether your answer makes sense. Make sure that the final answer is communicated properly with correct labeling. In trigonometry, students are introduced to a lot of formulas and relationship among functions. Getting familiarized with these formulas and relationship will be a big help in solving situational problems involving trigonometric equations and inverse trigonometric functions. Situational problems involving inverse trigonometric functions as an angle as its output. That angle satisfies a certain trigonometric expression, so when devising a plan to solve a problem, we can draw a right triangle that represents the data mentioned in the problem. In solving problems involving solutions of right triangles, we can use the concepts of angle of elevation and angle of depression. The concepts are used in situations when a person looks or observes an object that is either above or below the horizontal, the distance between the person and the object observed or the angle that the line of sight of the observer makes with the horizontal can be identified using some known information. When the object observed is above the horizontal plane, the angle between the line of sight from the eye to the object and the horizontal is called the angle of elevation. When the object observed is below the horizontal plane, the angle is called the angle of depression. 
When the triangle involved in a situational problem is not a right triangle, other trigonometric concepts may be used or the situation is reduced to a right triangle situation using diagrams and some algebraic manipulations. For oblique triangles, we use the laws of sines and cosines, solving algebraic equations using the properties of real numbers, and a good grasp or familiarization with the fundamental trigonometric identity and trigonometric formulas are also useful in solving situational problems in trigonometry. Let us have some examples. Example number one. A ladder is 6 meters long and reaches the wall at a point 5 meters from the ground. What angle does the ladder make with the wall? Here is our suggested solution. Let theta be the angle that the ladder makes with the wall. Drawing a diagram for the situation in the problem would be a great help in solving the problem. Assuming that the wall is perpendicular to the ground, the ladder forms a right triangle at its endpoint with the wall and the ground. If theta is the angle that the ladder makes with the wall, then the length of the ladder that is 6 meters is the hypotenuse of the right triangle form and the vertical distance from the ground to the tip of the ladder that is 5 meters is the side adjacent to theta. Using the definition of cosine function, we have cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so we have 5 over 6. We can get the value of theta by getting the arc cosine or inverse cosine function 5 over 6. Using your calculator, the angle is 33.56 degrees. Hence, the ladder makes an angle of 33.56 degrees with the wall. Let us have example number two. The acceleration of a piston is given by A is equal to 5 times the quantity sine omega t plus cosine 2 omega t. At what positive values of omega t less than 2 pi does A equal 0? This is our suggested solution. Let omega t be the crank angle that is the product of angular velocity and time in piston acceleration and A be the acceleration of a piston. From the given formula, A is equal to 5 times sine omega t plus cosine 2 omega t. We substitute A equals 0. Then we have 0 is equal to 5 times the quantity sine omega t plus cosine 2 omega t. Dividing both sides by 5, we have 0 is equal to sine omega t plus cosine 2 omega t. Using the formula for cosine function twice an angle, that is cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Then we have 0 is equal to sine omega t. Cosine 2 omega t will be 1 minus 2 sine squared omega t. We're writing the resulting equation. We have 2 sine squared omega t minus sine omega t minus 1 equals 0. Since we have a quadratic expression on the left-hand side, we can factor this as a product of two binomials in 2 sine omega t plus 1 times the quantity sine omega t minus 1 equals 0. To get the values of the angle, we equate each factor to 0. Then we have 2 sine omega t plus 1 equals 0. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we have 2 sine omega t equals negative 1. Dividing both sides of this resulting equation by 2, we have sine omega t equals negative 1 half. This implies that omega t is equal to arc sine negative 1 half. And since omega t must be positive and less than 2 pi, then the possible values for omega t will be 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. For the other factor, we have sine omega t minus 1 equals 0, adding 1 to both sides of this equation. Sine omega t is equal to 1. 
This implies that omega t is equal to arc sine 1. Again, since omega t must be positive less than 2 pi, then we have omega t is equal to pi over 2. Hence, we have three possible values for omega t that are positive less than 2 pi. These are pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Let us have example number 3. A lighthouse at sea level is 34 miles from a boat. It is known that the top of the lighthouse is 42.5 miles from the boat. Find the angle of depression from the top of the lighthouse. Here is our suggested solution. Let theta be the angle of depression from the top of the lighthouse to the boat. X be the horizontal distance from the base of the lighthouse to the boat. And R be the distance from the top of the lighthouse to the boat. Since the horizontal on the ground and the horizontal to the top of the lighthouse are parallel, using Paik theorem, that is, if two parallel lines are cut by the transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. Hence, we can form an imaginary right triangle such that the hypotenuse R is equal to 42.5 miles. The side adjacent to theta is 34 miles, that is equal to x. From the imaginary right triangle form, we can use the definition of cosine theta. That is, cosine theta is equal to 34 over 42.5. This implies that theta is equal to arc cosine 34 over 42.5. And theta will be equal to 36.87 degrees. Therefore, the angle of depression from the top of the lighthouse to the boat is 36.87 degrees. Let us have example number 4. From the concept of projectile motion, if an object is directed at an angle theta with theta element of the closed interval 0 to pi over 2, then the range will be r is equal to v sub 0 squared over g sine 2 theta in feet where v sub 0 in feet per second is the initial velocity and g is equal to 32 feet per second squared is the acceleration due to gravity. At what angle should the object be directed so that the range will be 25 square root of 3 feet given that initial velocity is 40 feet per second? Here is our suggested solution. From the given information, g is equal to 32 feet per second squared v sub 0, that's the initial velocity, equals 40 feet per second. And r, the range, is 25 square root of 3 feet. Substituting these values to the given formula, we have 25 square root of 3 equals 40 squared over 32 times sine 2 theta. Multiplying both sides by 32, and dividing both sides by 40 squared, that is 1,600, we have sine 2 theta is equal to 800 square root of 3 over 1,600. 800 over 1,600 is 1 half. Then we have sine 2 theta is equal to square root of 3 over 2. This implies that 2 theta is equal to arc sine square root of 3 over 2. Since theta is between 0 and pi over 2, then 2 theta must be between 0 and pi. Hence, 2 theta is equal to pi over 3. Dividing both sides by 2, then the angle theta must be equal to pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Therefore, the object must be directed at an angle pi over 6 radian or 30 degrees to have a projectile range of 25 square root of 3 feet. Let us have example number 5. A garden lot is in the form of a parallelogram. The owner would like to know the acute angle between two particular consecutive sides of the garden for the purpose of fencing. 
It is known that the area of the garden is 25 square meters. The owner measured two consecutive sides to be 6 meters and 4.5 meters. What is the acute angle between these two consecutive sides of the garden? Here is our suggested solution. Let A and B be the measure of the two consecutive sides of the garden lot so that A equals 6 and B equals 4.5. The area of the parallelogram given the two sides and an included angle can be obtained using the formula A is equal to AB sine theta, where A and B are the two sides of the parallelogram and theta is the included angle. From the given information, area is equal to 25 square meters, so we can plug in the known values to this formula and we can find the acute angle between two consecutive sides. So we have 25 is equal to 6 times 4.5 sine theta. 6 times 4.5 is 27, so we have 25 is equal to 27 sine theta. Dividing both sides of this resulting equation by 27, we have sine theta is equal to 25 over 27. This implies that to solve for theta, theta is equal to arc sine 25 over 27. Using a scientific calculator, theta is 67.81 degrees. Hence, the acute angle between these two particular consecutive sides of the garden lot is 67.81 degrees. Example number 6. A bridge is supported by triangular braces. If the sides of each brace have length 63 feet, 46 feet, and 40 feet, find the measure of the angle opposite the 46 foot side. Here is our suggested solution. Let A, B, and C be the sides of the triangular braces and B be the angle opposite angle small letter B such that A equals 63, B equals 46, and C equals 40. From one of the equations in the law of cosines, that is B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine angle B, we can derive an equation for the angle B in terms of the sides of the given triangle. Hence, we have 2AC cosine B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared. Using addition property of equality, dividing both sides of this resulting equation by 2AC, we have cosine B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. This implies that angle B is equal to arc cosine quantity a squared plus c squared minus b squared over 2ac. Substituting a equals 63, b equals 46, and c equals 40 to this resulting formula. Then we have b is equal to r cosine quantity 63 squared plus 40 squared minus 46 squared all over 2 times 63 times 40. Using a scientific calculator, we can get the measure of angle B to be 46.76 degrees. Therefore, the angle opposite the 46 foot side of the triangular brace is 46.76 degrees. That will be all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons.